Hey everyone, it is Zane Banks here, and I'm at home, I'm not in a studio. Uh, another lesson request has come through, and this time it is on how to improve your rhythm without using a metronome or a drum machine. That's a very good question, because I think using a metronome is just the default for most people. So I'll turn the metronome on, I'll play my scales, and that's not bad, right? But there's plenty more that you can do, and I think that... It's quite a one-dimensional approach, just relying on a metronome, and sometimes it can actually hinder your progress. The reason I say that is, say for example you're a football player, like maybe you're a quarterback, and you really want to improve your game. You know, we get a bit faster, you want to improve your throw, how far you can throw, your accuracy. Going to the gym is a necessary part of that. But if you only go to the gym and just, you know, do like, bench pressing and you know all that other stuff you, know, you can tell I'm a real gym guy that alone is not going to make you a better football player okay it's just part of it so you know obviously you need to have a slightly wider um, training routine but if all you did you know seven days a week was just like pump iron and you didn't get any better on the football field well, it would be no wonder and it's kind of the same I think for musicians we tend to think alright we'll put the metronome on and we'll just go and you're like, well, why, you know, why am I not more creative with rhythm? Why is my sense of time not better? Well, that's the answer. A thing with a metronome as well, a metronome is a little bit of a crutch. Like, it's very useful, but if you rely on it too much, then, you know, it's almost like, I guess, having an addiction, that when it's taken away and you have to play with other musicians, perhaps if they don't have a really great sense of time, or even worse, if you've got to play unaccompanied, then you're going to be wobbly. Playing unaccompanied is one of the harder things that you can do on the guitar. You know, for a variety of different reasons. But if we look at it just purely rhythmically, you don't have to play all the time. In fact, if you play all the time, it's too much for people to process. So how do you have really solid rhythm, do things interesting and creative on a rhythmic front, not playing all the time, and it's just you? Well, you've got to have a rock steady internal sense of rhythm and then you've got to 100% know what it is, the rhythms you want to play, and just pull it off. So that brings me to my first point. I've talked about uh, like the mental approach to music a couple of times in the last few weeks, and I'm gonna to touch on it now again with rhythm. If you don't know the rhythm that you, don't, that you want to play, then you can't play it. It's as simple as that. It's like in a language. If you don't know what it is you want to say and how to actually say it, then you can't say it. I can't speak French. So, I can't think in French, I can't articulate anything in French. If I want to, I've got to go and take lessons, it's as simple as that. So what I would suggest you do, uh, is a couple of different things you can work on with this. You could just click your fingers like this, like say I've got a swung rhythm, I'm clicking on two and four, a one, two, like that. And I might just imagine like a kind of shuffle blues, and I'm going to kind of sing phrases. I'm not really that interested in the, the pitch of what I'm playing, or even just like how good the melody is. I want my rhythm to be spot on. So I might be like... I can hear in my head what I want to play, so then the next task is on the guitar, like actually physically doing it. That is where time at the metronome helps, to get your fingers just, you know, pumping that iron so that when you have to play fast things, your fingers are agile, they're like well-trained soldiers that just execute orders. But I know what it is I want to play up here, and I've spent years doing that, like, you know, every time I waited for a bus or a train or stuck in traffic, I'm just hearing lines, kind of singing the rhythm of, of stuff like that to myself and I'm also really listening to like what is my sense of time like like that should not waver so if I try interesting syncopated or double time rhythms or cross rhythms am I bending my internal sense of time I shouldn't be but I'm listening really carefully to see whether or not that's wavering and I often record myself and I'll listen back and that, that will let me know mm -hmm. That's a thing you have to make sure like that you don't rush. Most people will have 
uh, proclivity for one thing. They're either going to rush or they're going to slow down. And you need to work out what you are. I'm someone who tends to rush. Okay, so when I get excited, I, I don't need any encouragement. I'm sitting on the front of the beat. A lot of the music that I play tends to lean on the front end of the beat. And this is something that if you listen really deeply to the kind of music you're into, you'll kind of see where the musicians you like sit when it comes to the beat. If you zoom into a beat with, say, a microscope, it's not just like, you know, one quarter of a bar or anything. Like there is, there's like territory there. A lot of country musicians, particularly bluegrass, they're like nudging, they're like right at the front of that beat, just pushing into the next one. Guys who play like say Neo Soul, like D'Angelo and that, they're like right on the back end of the beat. It's like you almost think they're not going to get to the next beat in time. And that's what makes that sort of egg rolling down a hill rhythm that you get in the sort of um, like the roots and <clears throat> that style of um, you know rhythm so interesting because you think like, oh, they're not going to get there, like an Indiana Jones moment sliding through the door. So that's something you can do. Sing what it is that you're sort of like hearing in your head, but focus more on the actual rhythm. If you can do it perfectly in time with great groove and you're not wavering your underlying tempo with your mouth, then playing it on guitar, that's the easy part. That's where like sitting with a metronome and shredding, it'll, it'll get the job done. So the other thing that I would you know, encourage you to do, which links into what we were just talking about, as an exercise, just you know, tap your foot, Maybe we'll go to a straight rhythm like this and just sing through all of the rhythmic subdivisions going from you know like whole notes to half notes to eighth notes to quarter notes to sixteenths to thirty seconds to sixty fourths and the triplet variations so I'm just going to start with um, like quarter notes so we're getting dum 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 then I subdivide that yum dun 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 one and two and three and Four and now there are triplet versions for those as well, right? So for the quarter note, we were like yum bum 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 bum, really trying to make it even. Then the eighth note version, ya da 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 da. It's easy to rush triplets. Ya da 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 da. One and two and ya a a a a a triplet. Just hearing that and so that everything is sort of even with the proportions of the rhythmic value given to each note. Then into da 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 one e and a two e and sixteenth one e and a two e and a one e and a two e and a and obviously you've got six tablets. So maybe doing a bar of each one. Da 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 It's hard. It's hard to sing a rhythm while hearing the timing and the proportions of the rhythm you want to play. You know, that's why it's good to, you know, I've spent a lot of time watching drummers, like going to drama clinics, talking to friends who are drummers, like they're the masters of this stuff because that's all they have to deal with, right? Um, it has so many great drummers out there. You go on YouTube, just type in, you know, drum clinic, whether it's Steve Gadd or, you know, um, Louis Belson, Shelly Mann, you know, all of those great jazz drummers, right through to guys like Chad Smith and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Hear how they talk about rhythm, how they practice their, their rhythms and everything. You can get into more subdivisions. You can do groups of five, you know, and then... You can look at how they're grouped. You could do straight five. So you have one, two, three, four, five, 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 or two plus three, daka daka ka gaka gaka ka gaka gaka ka. Or three plus two, da 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 You could mix those up when you get into sevens and nines and that's getting more into like real shred fusion territory, which I won't bore you with my attempts to do that kind of stuff. But that's, it's not easy to do what I just did then. And it takes quite a lot of practice and you don't need a guitar at all to do it. You just need to sit down and go through really, really slowly and just work through hearing those rhythms in your head and singing them. And then 5% of your awareness needs to be almost like a tutor watching you to go like, are you actually speeding up? You know, 
so they're the things I would work on. The other thing that I would say is get together with a good drummer or a good bass player, preferably one who is better or like in a skill level above you or at least at your level. And just jam. Like pick a groove, something that's not crazy with like, you know, lots of chords. It might just be like, say, the superstition groove, right? So you got the drummer going, just sit for like a minute or two and just like close your eyes and just like literally get into the, not physically, but like get into the drums. Like hear that one, hear that three with a snare. Hear what the swung, you know, 16 on the hi-hat are going to be and just see the landscape of that rhythm. And then work out where it is, like when you play that riff, it's almost like you're planting rhythmic seeds in this landscape, but like they have to be in exact locations. Once you put them in the right place, then you can muck around with it a little bit, you know? So if I go, I'm just gonna tap my foot on the floor so you can hear it. Rooms, you just see like guitarists and drummers or bass players and drummers just playing through a blues for like two hours with their eyes closed, just really focusing on things. And then the drummer, after 20 minutes of sitting on the, the same groove, would change it up. So instead of being on, like, say, if they're doing a shuffle, might change it so they just go straight and you adapt. And you know, you want your rhythm to be really strong and stable like steel so you can support an entire band but at the same time it's got to be flexible like water and it's got to adapt so that if there is a change or a feel change or if you're playing with a weaker musician who is dropping beats or speeding up you can adapt to that and try and like a shepherd you know what i mean sort of just get your flock to go back in the band is very similar to say like a, a group of mountain climbers you know how they're all tied together those mountain climbers are only as good as their weakest link. So rhythm is the most important aspect in a band. Rhythm is king. If you play a wrong note, it's a moment in history, right? You play too many wrong notes, then you can go and fix it. But it doesn't affect too much what other people are playing. But if you mess up the rhythm in a song, like you drop a beat or you continually speed up or you slow down, that's like one of those mountain climbers that slips and it's going to pull everyone down. And you won't get pulled together. So you really need to work on your rhythm. Um, Corey Wong, you know, he's a great rhythm guitar player. There's heaps of cool stuff that he's got, like particularly for the funky stuff. Kirk Fletcher, fantastic rhythm blues guitar player. There's a Danny Gatton video on rhythm guitar playing called Strictly Rhythm. And I know this is looking more at the kind of harmonic aspect of rhythm guitar. But these guys are very rhythmic players and they're worth like checking out. But I think the most important thing you can do is just really spend some time listening to great drummers and great bass players. And the critical listening that I talked about in the previous video can be applied to this. You know, where do they sit? Like what beat are you on? You need to know like in a four bar or an eight bar cycle, which bar are you in? A good musician can tell you that. There's no guesswork with any of this stuff. Like they know where they are in a song, they know what it is they're doing, and they know what it is they want to play. So check all that stuff out, cats. If you've got any lesson requests, drop a comment, and I will see what I can do. Um, but this has been a lot of fun, like talking about the kind of stuff that, you know, I'm here to help you guys, right? So uh, anything that is um, confusing you, I'll try my best to sort of explain it in at least the sort of simple term terminology that I think in. And uh, please hit subscribe, please share these videos with any other guitar players who are sort of trying to work their way through this sort of minefield of theory and uh, improvising. 
to play the most noble of instruments, the electric guitar or the acoustic guitar. And anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy.